Hey guys, welcome to the second part of the grass series of Few Nature. Uh, this series is going to this part specifically is going to cover the foliage manager, uh, and the foliage manager is a very essential window for Few Nature, and you can access it by going to Window, Few Nature, and Foliage. Um, what I recommend is putting it next to the inspector, but it doesn't really matter. You can put it wherever you want. Um, so this is very interesting. What you have in here is it looks at first glance kind of complicated, but in fact it's very easy to use. So the first one here it doesn't really shouldn't really interest you other than two settings in here, which is enabled, and which basically mean if it's enabled or not. Okay, very simple. And next up is the destroy. So this will clear off the maps of basically everything from your project other than the prototypes, um, and and your scene, and kind of you know just just uh, clear it out from your project. Very important uh, if you want to uh, remove your nature from the specific scene. Okay, so let me just cancel that. Uh, next up is the paint tools. Now you have in here two paint tools. The first one is the brush and the second one is a spline painting. Now sp spline painting isn't implemented yet and I didn't really get close to implementing it. So I'm not going to cover that yet. Uh, in the paint settings you'll see four, four, uh, four brushes. So these three here are bagged and you won't be able to use them. But they will be fixed before submission. But what they are is basically three uh, mask based uh, mask based brushes nothing too amazing so it doesn't really matter uh, for me to cover them now but it will be as I said fixed before it gets into the store okay so you have in here four settings first of all is paint brush size which could go up from 1 to 100 uh, until v2.1 it was till 30 and this increases the size of the brush now for painting you want to make sure you have one of the prototype selected or several of them by hold by uh, holding control okay so you can paint several uh, grass types at once okay so next up is you have your, the paint brush density and paint brush uh, sorry an erase brush density those these two are different and can be triggered uh, differently so the paint brush is the paint brush density will be used when you just hold left click okay Simple as that. You can also you can only go higher. Obviously, you can go lower. Similar to Unity. The next one, which is kind of a feature similar to Unreal Engine, is the erase brush density, and it can only be triggered when holding Shift. So if I hold Shift right now and left click, it will remove the grass. But if I increase it for like eight, it will reduce the grass the grass density to eight. If I can even lower, it will reduce it even more. Now this cannot happen in the paintbrush density. So let me just make it clear. In the paintbrush density, you can only go up, but in the race brush density, you can only go down. Okay, uh, not too complicated. Very simple and innovative. Okay, it allows you more. It allows you to get more control on the grass other than just removing it when holding shift. All right. So next up is the create new instances if uh, if something here. I don't remember what I wrote there, but it doesn't really matter. Um, this one here will basically make sure you don't create new instances when you draw on empty squares, which is these black ones. So if I just uh, paint on this one here, it's only going to paint on the one that are created. This is very, very important and essential because many reported that they, uh, they accidentally click on unpainted areas and just uh, populate them and it's just very annoying. So just disable that when you don't want to create new ones. Okay, next up is the advanced terrain painting. This will list all of the textures you have on your terrain, and it's a very useful feature. So let me just remove the grass in here to demonstrate. Okay, get me some. Let me just get some area, and I'm going to enable that and choose one of the textures. So as you can see in this area, you have 20% of uh, sorry, 40% of sand, and the rest is kind of grass. As you can see, it's not it's not only grass or only only sand. And if I draw here, it's going to draw normally because, you know, it has grass in here. Because what we have now, it says only draw on areas that have sand. And this specific area does on a lower, on low percentage though, but it does. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable layer density. This will draw depending on the amount of sand in this area. So as you can see, if I enable that, it will draw, so let me just go to back to 10. Okay, it will draw less, as you can see. All right. Now this depends on the, on the density, because we painted this on 10, the max paint density uh, is 10 at the moment. We will, I will show you how to change it later in this, in this part. Um, and if I go lower, we'll draw less, okay? So very, very interesting, all right? But if I go to an area which is only sand, 
Okay, and then I enable it in here, just set without recreate. And I go over here, reduce that, and check this again. We can paint in here again, but if I choose that, it's going to draw less, like just like before. Same goes in here. As you can see, it's only sand, so it's going to draw in a high density. But if I choose the grass, it's going to draw a small amount, and even in summers, it's not going to draw at all. Okay, so very cool. All right, so this is this is all for the paint painting. And one thing to notice is that you can close the paint uh, brush by just clicking Escape, so it's very useful. Alright, so let's go to the prototype management. The prototype management looks long, but it has a lot of unique and very useful features. So the first one is very simple, it's the spread noise. Now, unlike Unity, the spread noise doesn't go from 0 0.1 to 1, but it goes from 1 to 10. See if on Unity, sorry, from 1 to 2. See if on Unity you had a spread, uh, spread of 0 0.1, in New Nature it's 1. So it's basically times 10 the oldest that you had. All right, so if I get it to zero, it's going to look very grid-ish and it's not going to go away from where it was painted. But if I increase it slowly, you can see it goes away from the source and looks more like uh, actual grass, okay? It's gonna be showing more filled areas. Just, so give me a second, just show you here. So get it again, zero, as you can see, okay? It's very, very noticeable. Next up is the width noise, which is the noise of the width, the width scale. So I can change that, as you can see. Uh, this can be updated through the scripts again, and also doesn't have any overhead unlike Unity. You can change it and it's super fast. Next up is the height noise. Again, same thing, just for the height. Okay. Uh, next up is the rendering layer. Um, so this is something I guess Unity doesn't have, and this allows you to choose a rendering, rendering layer for uh, this specific grass object. So just like you choose a layer for the terrain, you could choose a layer for the grass. So this will allow you to ignore it on water reflections and stuff like that if you want. Next up is material cutoff, which is just like it says, the cutoff of the material. Okay, very simple. Next up is the shader. Uh, Unature has two shaders at the moment, which is the basic diffuse and advanced. The advanced has support for ambient occlusion, texture, ambient occlusion maps and also normal maps. Now, because I don't have any for this billboard, I won't choose it, okay? Uh, obviously, it's more expensive, but it's very well suited for stuff like speed trees or any mesh grass, basically. Um, so next up is use cost to fade distance, which will allow you to use a different fade distance than the global one if you want, if it's something that, if it's like a really heavy tree, uh, sorry, a really heavy foliage or something like that, you can just select that in here and use a smaller fade distance if necessary. Next up is the receive shadows, which will basically say or determine if it will receive shadows from the environment. Next up is the cast shadows, same thing, just for casting. And next up is the use color maps. So. Use color maps are actually uh, will actually allow the, the grass to read the colors from the surface. And as you can see, it paint it colors the grass according to the surface of of the specific place. So if I go to to sand, it's going to look uh, light, and if I go to grassy area, it's going to look more dark. So very very cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So next up is the rotate normals. Now the rotate normals are very interesting. This adds kind of a variant to the coloring of the grass depending on the normals. So if I just disable that, you can see it looks less detailed. It can seen, it can be seen more easily on, on hills. Let me just show you here. As you can see, it adds a variant to the grass. It's very interesting, and as you can see, it doesn't, have, doesn't uh, fit every type of a game and can be disabled. Okay. Next up is the max generatable density, which is also very, very interesting. And it, it's kind of an optimization method because what it does is that it says how, many, how much density will be generated for each grass. Now, if you, if you know you're going to use a very small density for stuff like, I don't know, uh, grass mesh, something like that, make sure you, you make it really, really small. So like this, okay? Now, if you use something really, really heavy, you can even 
sorry, really, really uh, light, you can even use it, get it up to 20. Now, you can see the difference between 10 and 20, very very easy to see, just paint more. You can see it very easily, it, you can, it's very, very noticeable. You can see that 20 is more filled from the 10, okay? Now, obviously, 20 is more expensive, and you want to use 10 for billboards, and something like 3 or 2 for uh, meshes, okay? Next up is, oops, next up is the touch panning. And this is also very simple, just whether it's enabled or not, and then the strength of it. Next up is the individual wind, which is again, just like the fade distance, it's going, it will basically mean if you want to use a different wind than the one in the global settings. And next up is LODs. Now LODs aren't necessarily um, useful in this specific version, uh, but in V2.1.5, I'm going to implement a much better approach for the LODs which will allow high, higher uh, fade distances with no really big overhead of the visuals. Uh, next up is the healthy color and dry color. So healthy color is, healthy and dry colors are exactly like the unity approach, nothing special, just it's kind of a variant to the color of the grass. Um, next up is the use quality settings shader, uh, shadows, which will basically ask if you want to use the shadow distance of your quality settings, and if not, you can specify one over here. Next up is foliage density, which is just like Unity. Okay, you can specify it on uh, on through the scripts, and it's very very useful and actually saves a lot of performance for lower end machines. Um, next up is fade distance, which is just like the costume one, but but globally. You can see. Now the height, ma the map generation mask is basically the height of that, the, the height that would, that will, that the grass will be drawn on. So in our case, we have the UNHA terrain. But if I remove it from here, as you can see, this, the grass will sink and won't be applied to the terrain. But if I enable it back or add it back, more precisely, it's going to be drawn back to the terrain. Um, so if you want to have custom meshes or something like that, or you want to ignore. Uh, grass painted all over your your buildings just make sure you assign it to a different layer than your buildings next up is wind settings just like uh, the custom ones but you can assign it over here uh, globally and it applies immediately with no overhead just like the um, just like the the noise uh, so it goes for speed and next up is the chunk settings so this is where it gets much much easier because the, the settings in here are very simple. What you want to do is, as you can see, if you go up, you will see the squares in here. You have, in this specific uh, moment, four pink squares. The pink squares are populated. The black squares aren't, aren't populated. So if I click on, the, on, a, on a black square, you will see chunk doesn't have a measure attached. If I click on a, punk squ on a pink square, sorry, you will get that. Now. In here, you can actually modify some of the settings. You can increase or decrease the resolution. Now, this is not necessary at the moment. Um, v2.1 v has some issues with it, but it's going to be addressed completely in v2.1.5 with the new LODs method. Um, so stay tuned for that, but it still works as far as uh, less tested. It's not broken or anything. Just not recommended to use at the moment. Um, next up is the world map settings, which is the height map and normal map. In case you do any changes and, you, and it seems like, and you can see, obviously again you see that it wasn't applied, just generate that. Next up is the color maps. If you changed any colors on your scene or you repainted the terrain, uh, just make sure you apply it and it's going to apply it. It's going to be applied, okay? Uh, oops. And yep, that's pretty much it. Um, nothing more to it. Very simple. Um, the fudge measure just looks, um, just looks very, very complex because it has a lot of features and a lot of custom stuff that helps you as a developer but in reality it's not that complicated and it's all to help you the user so yeah let me know if you have any more questions and that's it